Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we are gonna be reviewing the Sire P7 Fretless. Let's check it out. This is the Sire P7 four string fretless bass with the alder body. Now, folks have asked me for a while, hey Lobster, when's the P7 review coming? When are you gonna review a P7? We've reviewed a lot of Sire basses on the channel, but we've never actually looked at the P7 in great detail. And I was kind of saving that one because I didn't know what type of P7 I wanted to review. And I wanted to kind of just save the P7 for last because I thought it would be the best Sire bass in regards to uh, best balanced, the most well-rounded Sire instrument. And for this review, I picked the fretless version of the Sire P7, the four string one. And this particular one was provided to us at an artist discount from Sire. Thank you for that. And this particular one also belongs to our very own Hollywood Dale. So thank you, Dale, for letting me borrow this bass. The Sire P7 is one of Sire's, I guess, older models that has been around since nearly the beginning. And it is a very interesting one, and in my opinion, probably one of the most well-rounded Sire instruments you can get out of the box. To understand that, let's have a look at the specs of this bass. We have an alder body finished in a beautiful three-tone sunburst, and accompanying that is a nice tort pickguard. The pickups that we see here are Sire's own in-house P and J pickups, and the J pickup is a hum-canceling J, meaning that when we solo this pickup, or when we have the PJ together, we do not have any noise whatsoever. A very nice touch and attention to detail there. Accompanying these pickups is Sire's in-house preamp, which is the same Sire preamp in literally every Sire bass that has a preamp. So it is the same tried and true preamp. I have my opinions on this preamp in regards to certain applications like the V series. However, in the P series, things are a bit more spaced out and a bit easier to comprehend. We have a master volume and tone control and a stacked knob, and then we have a master blend. And then next to that, we have a three band preamp with a treble, a mid control with a frequency selector, and a bass control. That is a lot to take in for this particular instrument. However, these controls are fully functional and they do a lot to give you a variety of tones here. Moving up to the neck, this is where things really start to look good. We have a maple neck with a fretless ebony fingerboard that has a 20 fret range. And the fingerboard is coated in a polyurethane, so this is a gloss finish here. Beautiful finish on this fingerboard that makes for some awesome tone. The back of the neck, however, is finished in a satin, so it's not going to get sticky or your hand isn't going to get stuck. The nut width is a jazz-like 38mm profile. And then up at the headstock, we have the Sire Signature headstock and the four inline Sire tuners and the Sire String Tree. Now, I've already talked in length about the Sire tuners in my other reviews. Honestly, on the high-end bases, they're not bad tuners, but they are a bit weighty and result in a little bit of neck dive. Replacing these tuners with some hipshot ultralights saves you about a quarter pound off the headstock. That's no joke. With a four string, you do save a quarter pound. So that is, you know, one thing I'd like to see improved is the weight of the tuners on the Sire bases. Opposite of the headstock, down here at the bridge, is Sire's own in-house bridge with their in-house proprietary screw pattern. Unfortunately, this doesn't have any sort of fender screw pattern, meaning that you'll have to drill new holes if you want to replace the bridge with a different unit. I would like to see a more standard screw pattern like they did on the D5, but again, this is Sire's thing. So it's a good bridge, it functions, it works simply, and there are rails for these saddles, meaning that the saddles won't jiggle back and forth if you're adjusting the string height or intonation. Just like most sires, we also have the option to string through the bridge or string through the body as well. I appreciate that flexibility, especially that they include it in the majority of their lineup, both from the budget instruments all the way to the high end. So always a nice touch. Now let's go ahead and turn the space around. Around back, there's really not much to see here as the control cavity is routed underneath the pick guard. So all you see in the back is the uh, dark stained finish here the four string ferrules, and the 18 volt battery compartment that does not have a battery door. I've talked about this before, I do wish they had a better battery door design. Hey everybody, Sire listened and gave us battery doors, yay! 
We can also see the four screw fender like neck attachment with the angled neck heel for easier access to the upper frets and the back of this uh, fretless neck with the satin finish. And moving up to the headstock, we can see the back of these four open gear sire tuners. Now, how much does the Sire P7 fretless weigh? This particular example comes in at 8.8 .8 pounds, which is pretty well weighted in my opinion for a four string Fenderish style instrument. And how much does the Sire P7 fretless cost? I believe the alder body version of the four string P7 with frets comes in at $604. And I believe there's a $100 premium for the fretless bases. So this would come in at around $704. In my opinion, I think that's very well priced given the specs that you see here and the fact that you have a really nice finish on this fingerboard, which is something you usually don't see at the sub $1,000 price point. So a very nice touch and attention to detail here. And I know you're all wondering, what does the space sound like? You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. is the P7 fretless. Look at that fingerboard, look at it shine. Woo! What a wonderful instrument to play. I think that Sire is nailing it on their fretless instruments with the coated fingerboard. Makes you get a lot of moi in your tone. I mean, listen to that. <laughs> Just beautiful, beautiful tone. I also appreciate the use of a hum canceling jazz pickup, which is something that you usually don't see in other PJ basses in the sub $1,000 price point. They usually give you a single coil and that makes for a bit of noise when you have the jazz pickup engaged in any scenario, at least in a noisy electrical environment like what we have here. So again, for the pickups, we have a really nice Alnico P pickup and jazz pickup. Just sounds really nice, rich classic tone. And uh, right now we don't have the preamp engaged, so we just have the volume, tone, and blend control. The blend is centered and the tone is at 100%. First, let's check out these pickups individually a little bit, and then we'll bring them together and bring in the preamp, mess with that. Let's start with the P pickup here. Here's what that sounds like, tone at 100%. is some nice P tone. That is what you expect when you think fretless P bass and this definitely does deliver. <laughs> These are just fun. Uh, let's take the tone down to about 50% now. And here's the tone all the way down. Let's take the tone back up. Let's solo the jazz pickup now. 
This is a really nice sounding hum canceling jazz. It's in the 60s position, so it's a little bit closer to the P pickup as opposed to closer to the bridge in the 70s position jazz pickups. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this bass is strung up with, I believe, Diodario chromes or whatever comes stock with the P7. They are flat wounds, and I have not restrung this bass, as it is Dale's and not mine, and he likes these strings, so. Yes. Now let's take the tone down to about 50%. <laughs> and here's the tone all the way down. That is some really nice tone out of this jazz pickup with the tone all the way down. Very like classic kind of Jocko-y sort of tone. Like, <laughs> oh man. Uh, let's bring the neck pickup back into the mix and center our blend control and bring our tone control to 100%. <laughs> A very nice PJ tone as well. Let's take the tone to around 50%. And here's the tone all the way down. <laughs> oh man. And here's the tone, it's already all the way down. So I'm just gonna take the tone back up to 50%. I'm gonna pan to the jazz pickup and just for fun. <laughs> okay, I went off on a little thing there. Anyways, back to the bass that we have here, Sire P7. We've done everything thus far with the preamp bypass. We have a little switch here to bypass the preamp and bypass the battery circuit so you can play this thing 100% passive. 
So let's flick the switch and play with our preamp a little bit. We have three separate EQ controls as well as a mid frequency control on the lower half of the mid control. So there is a lot to unpack here. The passive tone control is also fully active with the preamp. So you can take down the tone, solo the P pickup, jack the bass control all the way up, smack down the mids and cut the high mids and you can get a dubby tone. But you can also keep the P pickup engaged, take down the bass to a 50% cut, crank the treble, and crank those same high mids. <laughs> yeah, so you have a variety of tones to pick from with this EQ. Things can get a little bit daunting, but honestly, it is your standard three band style EQ with a mid sweep, so it's not too crazy. Let's boost the bass about 50%, boost the treble about 50%, and let's cut the mids and play with our mid frequency control. First, cutting our low mids. Let's also make sure our tone control is all the way up. Next, let's move our mid frequency control around a bit. That is a nice mid scoop there. Let's keep playing with the mid frequency control. That is a lot of flexibility here with this EQ. Let's bring the treble and the bass back down to center and let's boost our mids about 50% and do the same thing. That was with the low mids boosted. Let's start playing with this mid control. Very nice flexibility from this preamp. So overall this EQ is very flexible and we've just shown you a little sample of what it can do just with the P pickup here. There's so much more that we can do and believe me we've done it. <laughs> We've reviewed, you know, the V3, the V7, we reviewed the P10, we reviewed all sorts of different bases with the same Sire preamp. And I think that, you know, if you're watching this video right now, you have a pretty good idea of what this preamp can do. And if not, I definitely recommend checking out my other Sire reviews as we definitely cover it in a bit more detail. So a good pairing overall. I dig the tone of these pickups, especially paired with this preamp. Sire makes a killer jazz bass, but in my opinion, you know, it's the V5 that really stands out with the more traditional passive setup. 
up. But for a like gigging musician or someone who wants something that can really kind of do it all, I think the P7 is one of those basses alongside the M series that really has so much tonal flexibility and can really nail those classic tones. Now I'm gonna bypass the preamp once more and we are gonna check out these pickups real quick with the tone all the way open and a pick. So here is the P pickup, preamp bypassed, tone open with a pick. and here is both pickups together, tone open, preamp bypassed. And here is the jazz pickup soloed. <laughs> Let's put the pick away, center the blend control, and that's the wrong knob. Here's the blend control, and let's see how she slaps. <laughs> And let's solo the P pickup and give it a slap. And finally, let's center the blend control and throw some drums behind this bass. So here are my final thoughts on the Sire P7 four-string fretless bass. The P7 as well as the M5 and M7 are, in my opinion, the best applications of the Sire preamp. And I think they do the most work here as well as allow you to really alter the tone in a meaningful way. You also have these great pickups, the Hum Canceling J and the really nice sounding P pickup. And you just have a ton of tones at your fingertips here. That combined with this killer fretless fingerboard, I mean, the Sire is nailing it with their fretless basses. The V5 fretless bass that I have here is one of my favorite fretless instruments of like all time. I love this bass, the neck is killer. And many of my bass playing friends have complimented that like, 
For being a like $500 instrument or whatever, this thing is just absolutely nuts. I've modded it, of course, but the neck is still sire and this is killer. The story is the same with the P7. And again, this is a killer neck, makes for a lot of moi and great fretless tone. This is a player's fretless bass. My only real gripes are the tuners, which are a bit on the heavy side, though they function perfectly. They do result in a little bit of neck dive, which can be remedied by replacing those tuners with some hipshot ultralights. I've made a video on doing that on my Sire V7 Vintage, and it made a whole lot of difference in regards to the balance. I believe you save about a quarter pound of weight off the headstock, which is rather significant. Other than that though, I have to say that this is one of the best Sire values out there, especially for a fretless instrument. And unlike the V series or the M series, with the P, Going from the P5 to the P7, or the P7 to the P5, you have two vastly different instruments. The P5 is a classic old school P bass, whereas the P7 here is like a jack of all trades for a gigging musician. So they're two very different instruments. But looking at, you know, the V5 and the V7, they're both jazz basses, one which has a preamp, one which doesn't. And going from the M5 to the M7, they're essentially the same instrument. But with the P5 and the P7, you get two vastly different instruments that have very different feels and vibes. So I really dig what they're doing here with the P7. And this fretless, in my opinion, is the special sauce of the P7 lineup. So definitely go check one of these out if you are looking for a fretless bass, as this one's absolutely killer. So what am I going to rate the Sire P7 Alder 4-string fretless bass? Ugh. I am going to rate this bass... Four claws out of five. This bass is in near perfection, and honestly, if it had lighter weight tuners out of the factory, and maybe some higher quality hardware in regards to the knobs, I would call this a perfect bass for the price point. But as it stands, it is just oh, almost there. This has so much to offer, especially for someone looking for like a quality, flexible, fretless instrument. Sire is absolutely nailing it with their lineup. So great job, Sire. You've made a killer bass here, and I can't wait to see what other fretless instruments come in the future. Let me know what you think about the Sire P7 fretless Alder down in the comments below. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Sire P7 Alder fretless bass. And as always, until we groove again.